Hello my soccer universe, this week I decided to look a little bit closer into La Liga. The last full length video I've made about La Liga is more than two months ago, but I have to say I was not really feeling into La Liga until uh, recently. I, of course I made a ton of uh, short videos, but you know when you look over the overall results it was basically yeah the same old two potentially three Atleti actually if they wouldn't have had two blips uh, in, in, in between you could potentially see them challenging uh, but other than that there is a certain sameness to it however then there is the big story the fairy tale from Catalonia no it is not the big team from Barcelona it is actually teeny tiny Girona playing I think only their fourth ever season in La Liga and after 13 rounds that's around a third of the season they're leading the table two points ahead of Real Madrid having only lost one game against Real Madrid and drawn another one it's pretty pretty amazing now uh, some caveats are here in order except for Real Madrid they barely have played any of the top teams so I think the value is inflated they're also outperforming XG but it's still really remarkable that this team uh, that no one really had on their radar is A, still up there, but B, doing it so playing in style. I mean, it's a team, unfortunately, uh, they always play at times where I don't uh, really look out for La Liga, but whenever I see Hala, that's a great team. They actually play really, really well, especially with Dovbik up front uh, and then Savio and, and so on. They have some really good, good, good players and there's some real fun stuff that they are, they're playing. So uh, if you have the chance, from everyone that I hear that has watched uh, Girona, I can only say watch Girona. It's definitely worth it. They're up there. Now, uh, many say it's not quite the fairy tale uh, that one wouldn't like to make it because Girona is, of course, part of the city group. But that's only true to a certain degree. Yes, they get the financial stability due to being part of the city, city, city group. But I think they have only a handful of players at most that actually have been given by Manchester that belong to the uh, Manchester City uh, to the larger sense. The race is actually built quite independently. And yes, you want to uh, make some alliances to get better. I think that's fair game. I understand. And I myself have also been a little bit critical of this multi-club ownership. But I think they might actually be doing it uh, in the best way possible. And I think the City group overall, unlike Red Bull, who have been blatantly transferring players back and forth to the city group, I never have the feeling that they are doing it. Uh, those teams are all run very autonomously. It's not like Manchester City are parking a bunch of players out there and then recall them late, later on. It's actually more that they are rejects, uh, not even from, from within the CC city group, that are making it into the Girona squad. But it's really, really outstanding. Man, just at the that they have no other team has scored more goals than Girona at the moment with 30 ones. I said they're leading with two points ahead in, in the table. And it's a shame I don't have a Girona jersey. I never thought I would need to get one. Yeah, this is now kind of top of the list for the near next year, although I don't really like the current home jersey all that much. So maybe have to look into an old, older one. But that's talk of the future. Other that, than that, in La Liga, uh, I mean, the L word Leicester is being thrown around. I don't quite see that. I really need to see because the one time that they played a big opponent, we'll talk about that. I want to go a little bit uh, through all the rounds and pick highlight results here, here and there. Uh, was Real Madrid and while they had good chances to begin with uh, in the end Real Madrid uh, ran away as comfortable winners which is probably how it may go against others. It's a similar story that another team that is absolutely sensational this season especially in the Champions League Real Sociedad they are not higher than sixth in the table because they already have three losses because they played all the big teams and they lost every single game of those although they should have gotten at least out of two something should have beaten Barcelona they sh probably should have gotten something against uh, Real Madrid and I don't really remember the Atletico Madrid or game all that well so yeah we still have the big stars the teeny stars that we talk I mean Laminia Mal became the youngest goal scorer we had Jude Bellingham uh, tearing it up in the league although now he is injured and suddenly Real Madrid the other guys are scoring like Vinicius Junior and uh, Rodrigo which kind of has some people saying that, uh, yeah, because uh, Bellingham was, was playing, they're suddenly playing better, which is a ridiculous notion. 
to be honest. On the other side, Barcelona is a team that, yeah, pretty much two months ago played their last really good game. And since then, it just doesn't feel right. The only other game that they played sort of well in was the Classico, where for 60 minutes they had Real Madrid in the bag and then Bellingham didn't have a great game, scores a brace. So there you go. So this is it for me, like the general situation uh, in La Liga. As I said, I want to go now quickly, very quickly, round to round, and then maybe make a little bit of bigger review of this past round before we look traditionally uh, again at standings and, and so on, although I'm planning to roll them in uh, when we do the review of the current round. But let's go all the way back to September because that is literally the last time that Barcelona had a great showing in the 5 0 destruction uh, of Betis. But then they always tend to beat Betis with the Joao's really playing well. Uh, Level Lotowski's scoring and the you know, both Joao Felix getting the opener and the closer. It was also one of the two blips that Atleti had losing 3 0 uh, at Valencia. This was like after an international break. It was very uncharacteristic because we really thought that Atleti might actually do something. In the same round we had already Real Madrid against Real Sociedad where Berenjea gave uh, Real Sociedad an early lead. It seemed like they were really well in well the game but then within a few 50 minutes after they have Real Madrid turned around but that was a much much closer game than the final scoreline might suggest and it was also a showcase already for uh, Girona who get a 4-2 win at Granada. Doesn't sound in Granada, but uh, really down in a in, in, in table. But you know, a 4 to win is not something that happens. They had 3 0 at the half. Granada pulled one back and then was then 3 2. So this was way, way, way in September. Another one was then a week later 5 3 at home to Mallorca. And again, a similar pattern. They had a huge lead at the half 4 1. They made it 5 1 even. Uh, then Mallorca pulls two, two, two back. But Girona really taking it early. Uh, there might actually be another player that I know in Daily Blind in there, which is also someone that you wouldn't necessarily have expected uh, there. But Girona being really, really good. Uh, on the other side, we had the Barcelona had a really hard work against Celta Vigo, a Celta team that probably should be in much better position than the currently. They they are leaking points. And the points are not matching their, their performances despite uh, having a Rafa Benitez as their manager. And then, of course, uh, Atletico Madrid, after losing two, two to Valencia, completely dominated Real Madrid and win deservedly 3 1 with Morata scoring a brace and Antoine Griezmann also getting on the score sheet. But that was very comprehensive, showed that Atletico Madrid probably this year. This year only has been one of the best, if not the best team in Spain, especially Griezmann being in really, really outstanding cynic form. It's just, again, consistency that actually Real Madrid have because they have a slightly better squad. Uh, going into round seven, uh, we had the first uh, of those real blips of Barcelona, 2-2 against Mallorca. When Mallorca twice took, 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 took the lead, uh, especially the second goal uh, through Prats. I think there was a mistake by Ter Stegen in there. They get an equalizer through Firmin Lopez, another youth product uh, in the rel 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 late. But that was a game where they were really, really, really struggling uh, there. So uh, that, that definitely one of the more outstanding results. Um, and at the same time, we get Girona winning at Villarreal. That's a statement win, although Villarreal not so great and already have fired coach. I think already on, I think they have just hired Marcelino. We had Real Sociedad going to Valencia, winning there where Atletico Madrid had just lost. So, you know, all the all those uh, things hap happening are, and Atletico also get a 2-0 win at Osasuna. So uh, that was that in round seven. In round eight, uh, we had Barcelona beating Sevilla. That game had Sergio Ramos written all over it. And of course, he, he, he decided with an own goal in a way. Uh, it was really good defending by Sevilla. Again, Barcelona kind of keep keeping it tight. Ramos actually playing well for Sevilla and he's one of those acquisitions that I think most Sevillanos did not really like it, uh, at the beginning but I think he's giving them a little bit more defensive stability. Uh, we had actually quite a few in interesting games in that round. That was the one where we had Girona against Real Madrid where we thought that Girona uh, miracle is over because despite them having good chances in the first 10 15 minutes Jose Luki, Jose Luki gives them the lead and Germain is a great goal and Bellingham scores a winner but that was never a 3-0. This was a much 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 tighter game. 
At the same time, uh, Real Sociedad beat Athletic Club 3-0, also very, very one-sided and showing all the class that Real Sociedad can bring on the pitch. Lillemar Kubo, uh, with probably the celebration twerking of the year, uh, and then Oyar Sabal uh, getting, ma making a really comprehensive score in one of the most atmospheric uh, games in Spain every time around. Um, going forward, we have then the Real Sociedad coming back losing to Atletico Madrid so you had them losing to away to Real Madrid away to Atletico Madrid again it's very late through a Griezmann penalty again I think Real Sociedad have been undersold in that game for sure uh, we had also Real Madrid beating Osasuna relatively comfortable 4-0 we had Girona going to Cardiff winning only 1-0 for once uh, so they're not always scoring a shitload of goals however it was another uh, Head scratcher for Barcelona, where Granada through Brian Zaragoza had a 2 0 lead uh, within half an hour and was all fully deserved. Laminia Mal scores his first goal for Barca, is really, really, really good. And then, yes, was an onslaught for um, from Barcelona that is then uh, rewarded with by Sergio Roberto scoring, but then almost on the other side, I think, uh, Brian Zaragoza. Almost scored another goal, and Joao Felic thought he had the winner. Was this allowed for offside? It was a very, very messy game. But one very overarching feeling was that Barcelona was not convincing. Let's put it this way: I'm not certain to say they did not look right, but it's not convincing. Uh, remember when I said Sergio Ramos against Barcelona uh, in round ten? It was another Sergio Ramos game against Ramos. He did literally everything there. He tried, he just didn't score. It ends in a uh, one, one draw. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it was an own goal in there. It was uh, Sergio Ramos a little bit headbutting the opponent. He was everywhere. Cavacal getting then an equalizer shortly after the first goal went in. But that was probably Sevilla's best performance of the season. Whereas Barcelona again get a rather nasty 1 0 win. Through another youth academy practice, uh, uh, nine, uh, only 19 uh, year old, I think he's called Gu, which is really, really well, you or, 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 or whatever. I would say you, but you know, what do I know? He came in and with his with his first touch, he scores the winning goal in a game that I think uh, Athletic Club might have deserved a draw out of. Well, this already leads us to the Clásico, or as I would say, the fake Clásico, because. On the Montjuic, it doesn't feel classical like at all. Add to it, you know, the weird surroundings, the weird jerseys, Barca playing with a Rolling Stones logo. It just did not feel quite right. But what felt right is that Barcelona, at least for the first half, was clearly the better team. It took deservedly lead. Probably should have doubled that when there were plenty of chances there. Uh, and it held until like the 60th minute or so. I don't want to say it was... Um, it was like that until Lewandowski came off, but there was a clear break in the game at that point. Then Bellingham gets one back uh, and scores the winner in stoppage time. Um, and Barcelona didn't have a really a fight back. And at that point, you could really say that, you know, uh, you saw the threat that Barcelona may get points and wins without quite being convincing. But maybe when they hit the big time, they don't get it right. Whereas Real Madrid just get by, they have enough class that can overcome any deficiency uh, in their playing style over in the same round. Girona get another tight win, 1-0 over Celta, again a team that doesn't get enough points. Uh, whereas Atletico Madrid get a 2-1 over Al Alaves, we also need to mention the 2-2 draws in that round of Real Sociedad and Athletic Club came very, very differently. I think Rayo Vallecano equalized in the uh, stoppage time, but Athletic Club got the equalizer in stoppage time there. But to me, the, uh, the Basque teams, the Basque Giants, are the only teams that could uh, hold up with the two Madrid teams and the two Catalan teams uh, this season. Speaking of Catalan teams, Girona get another big win, 4-2 at Osasuna. They were 2-1 down. Uh, right after the second half, but come storming back. Uh, it is really, really impressive. This is a very resilient team. 
where at the same time Atletico Madrid have another bleep. You don't lose at Las Palmas if you want to go for, for, for a title. Fortunately, others are also not quite there. Uh, we had a really, really entertaining game between Celta and uh, Sevilla. I think uh, at, at the end, Iago Aspas got made at the VAR screen because there were some really weird VAR calls in there as well. But the game of the round was definitely Real Sociedad completely destroying Barcelona, except they cannot score. And then very, very, very late Barcelona score a winner out of nowhere. Uh, so much luck. In the same round, also Real Madrid only a nil nil at home to Real Vallecano. That was the first one without Bellingham. Which now conveniently leads us to the current round. Uh, where I want to put a little bit more focus and pick out a few more highlights. Because for the rest, you know, you can watch my short videos as well if you want to know a little bit more. It started with a real classic between Athletic Club and Celta Vigo. 4-3. Celta had twice the lead in the first half. Iago Aspas, who actually scored an, another... Uh, no, it was not Iago Aspas, uh, but he, he gave the lead. Uh, Bamba uh, re, uh, um, also gave them the lead. Then there was also a goal disallowed for Celta. So it was a really, really good performance by Celta. However, Sunset and Guruzeta uh, get the equalizer uh, each time, and then Guruzeta gives them the lead. Um, then Strand Larsen goal, that's the one that was disallowed. That's the, it was full, would have been 3 3 a few minutes later. He actually scored, and you could see that he was not uh, really celebrating uh, there. Uh, then Celta get a penalty that Aspas sees saved, and then very, very late uh, in the 98th minute, Berenguer converts a penalty for Athletic Club. Crazy game, uh, probably one of the best on the weekend. Girona undeterred. 2-1, Dovbik and Savio turn around and 1-0 deficit. Of course, it was Mitchell's return to his former team, uh, Rayo Vallecano. He got a TIFO from the Rayo fans, tells you how much they value him. Real Sociedad continued their good form with 3-1 over Almeria. As I said, Real Sociedad, the only three losses are against the big three teams in, in, in La Liga. Everyone else, they have at least gotten a draw out of. I think this is a team that we have to look out for, given how, how, how they play in the Champions League as well. Uh, they are really finding their rhythm at the moment. It's, it's uh, quite amazing to see. Uh, Real Madrid Valencia looks very one sided 5 1. However, Hugo Duro probably should have had a hat trick, especially in the first half. He had quite a few chances. It's 2 0 at the half for Real Madrid, and they make it 5 0 with, uh, you know, after Cava Halsco, this Vinicius Vini Jr., and Rodrigo scoring two each. Hugo Duro gets his goal, but it's way, way, way too late. Um, Alaves also should have led by more at the half. Uh, Samu scoring. Barcelona had a kickoff. Within 17 seconds, Alaves had scored. Samu hit the post, should have scored at least another goal. It should have been 2 0 at the half. Barcelona was nowhere. This was probably the worst uh, Barcelona performance and coming on the heel of the putrid Champions League performance. However, then uh, Lewandowski had in great head and equals, and then he gets a penalty. But you could also see he was not very happy with uh, his uh, team teammates, especially Laminia Mal, not serving him well because when he scores, he scores. That's what Lewandowski does, and he ends a goal drought that has been going on for way too long. The Derby Sevillano ends in a 1 1, probably should have been won by Betis, where Isco is another player that we have to talk about. He is actually, he has not played for almost three years. He looks sensational in a Betis shirt, absolutely. Um, Betis should have scored at least more than the one goal through Ayosa Perez. Uh, in the end, a great job by Rakitic equalizes the game, uh, but again, kind of ferments that Sevilla, the glory days are over and you know we know they're in uh, financial trouble they need to sell players to get other other things so there is some trouble going on as well bet is probably the more mature team except they cannot score and this is um you know this was their time to for to finally win uh, Sevilla derby and then Villarreal have a one nil lead through Gerard Moreno 20th however Witzel, Griezmann and Lino turn it around for Atletico Madrid, who stay then on the top, um, towards the top of the table. Uh, nominally, they are just two points behind uh, Barcelona because their game against Sevilla got postponed. Um, however, we already know if we adjust for the standings, Atletico Madrid are ahead, so uh, they have a slightly better record than Barcelona there. Uh, let's walk through the, through the table as well. We have, you know, Atletico Club, Real Sociedad, Abel, I think, Real Sociedad's rating is definitely down because of uh, who they've lost. I've mentioned it before. Uh, Real Betis probably, if they could add a few more wins, 
would look probably pro 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 better. Then Las Palmas is a really good promoter team. Well, I mean, I think they have a pretty good home field advantage. Away from home is where you have to worry. Valencia enjoys so far a relatively good season. And Rayo also, uh, despite losing a coach to Bournemouth, Bournemouth, I think look quite well. Uh, we slowly entered the trouble zone in Getafe and Osasuna, probably two teams that will remain up there. Sevilla, a team that just doesn't feel right. Villarreal also loads of trouble. Maybe Marcelino can turn it around. We have Alaves, Cadiz, Mallorca, Celta, Granada and Almeria. I think those are the teams fighting against uh, relegation. Uh, so more or less probably starting Alaves. Um, there it gets really tight. I feel that Celta Vigo should be higher up, up there. I hope this doesn't become like this negative dynamics where you start not getting results and then you think you're not good, good enough and it's just spiraling down. I uh, think if they can convert their chances, I think Celta should have nothing to do with relegation. But at the moment, it really does not look well for them. At the moment, the model even says they're going down. How about Girona becoming champions? That's really, really slim, but top four is right in there. So, could be, could be, could be, could be. Uh, after the break, uh, we get... Not really a big fixture, to be honest. I mean, Girona against Athletic Club is probably the best one in there. Rayo, Barcelona, that got Kumo fired uh, last time around. We have Atletico against Mallorca. Um, that also had a little surprise not too long ago in Cardiff against Real Madrid, but you wouldn't really say. Real Sociedad against Sevilla could potentially be one. So, yeah, a little bit of a longer video from La Liga, but I think the league is becoming really, really interesting, especially with Girona in, in, the, in the Real Sociedad. I, I don't give up on them. I just wish they had a little bit more, uh, you know, more depth in the squad and maybe a little bit more class in there as well. But um, overall, they are a really brilliant team. The Champions League have shown it. Any case, please add anything you want and you like for La Liga below. Give a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to him and see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!